off. Um, okay, so do you guys get that idea a little bit about s separating out the data into subgroups, like why that would be important or why it would be helpful for you? Mm -hmm. So the data set we, that we give you should have the opportunity for that because that's just one of those things we try to provide for you. So for instance, in bones it was different ethnicities or different gender, in weather it was North and South Island, in GDP, uh, sorry, in the health and wealth one, it would be like developing or non-developing countries. So different groups you can break stuff out into. Laura? Oh, so would it be like, so data set for like all the bones that they had, yeah. and then have it split out into like what the different... Exactly, sorry. Get this one open up. So this was the data set for bones that they did. Um, and as you come down, you can see here that they um, split it out by ethnicity because that was one of the ways the data set was ca characterized. So they were able to come up with a trend line for African, Asian, and Caucasian remains. Um, and that wasn't the only option. If you go back to the data set, this is how I would know that there's a few options because I see ethnicity is a category, and I also see that gender is a category. So they could have done an investigation for male or female remains, and just to hide, try to help identify different things there. Would you then talk about holes and like concerns in each population? Because like, on that one, there were heaps that were really low. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. So um, one thing to keep in mind too is when you get your data, just make a bunch of plots, but but think about things again. So like if you didn't know what a femur or a tibia was, or a fibula or a humerus. Like, look them up on an anatomy chart or ask somebody. Because, like, comparing the length of the tibia and the fibula, is that going to be very interesting? Why, for those of you that know? Yeah, they're right next to each other, right? So they should be similar. But if I compared maybe, like, the tibia to the height of the person, is that more interesting? Yeah. Um, cool. So the first group, you'll select the holes of the genes in, and then you'll yeah, the first graph, I just do it all together. Yeah. Keep it basic. Do it all together. And this is generally for people what happens, for any person. Okay. Right? And then you can come in and say, but I know that I'm curious about male or females, so I'm going to break it out and look at males versus females, see if there's a different ratio, because I know that females generally have, I don't know, is it longer, shorter torsos or something? Yeah, I don't know. Um, but that would be something that you could talk about. And so then getting back to what you were saying, Phoebe, yeah, if I'm going to make a prediction here, because if I was going to make a prediction here, I noticed that um, in this, if you read this task, it's actually asking you to identify remains, like they've given you some bones they found and they're trying to get you to predict who it would be based on body types. So there's a little bit of a story behind this one, which isn't necessarily something we'd give you. But, you know, they're, they're saying that my African data is pretty small here. You notice that everybody, the longest femur, femur length is 42. So if they're trying to predict for an African with a femur length of, you know, 45 up here. It's not well, they are predicting. It is possible, but are they as confident no. than if it was in here? No. Well, it's not so much an outlier as, um, I mean, think about this. Would it make sense that Africans have like across the board, every African has, or sorry, Asian, not African, reading carefully. The red is the Asian. It, does every single Asian have a shorter femur length than any Caucasian or Asian in the, or African in the planet? No. no, right? So what I'm saying is by looking at this data set, I have some, but is it a fair representation of the entire Asian population? No. Probably not, because I only have very short femur lengths to compare off of. My prediction is for somebody who I believe is an Asian, has a much longer femur, I'm going to use that trend line. It seems to fit, but I have no other data out there to back that up. So my investigation would be a heck of a lot better and much more robust if I had more femur lengths to use that were of Asian descent. Yeah? So that would be a weakness in there. Would you have to make all of the trend lines um, like the same? The trend no, you could have one linear and one nonlinear. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. So you might break it out and find that, oh, South Island actually follows a log curve really well and North Island follows a linear curve really well. That's fine, too. Is that something, is that something you can go on? Yep. And it, just like you would have done for the whole data set, I noticed that the South Island fits a log, if it did, fits a log graph because it increases rapidly at the start and then levels off. I noticed that the North Island looks more like a linear because it's consistent the whole way through. It's at a constant rate. Yep. 
you could definitely go into research on those ones. Yeah? So, where, where even were we? All right. So, those are kind of your opportunities in terms of finding the trend lines. But that kind of also ties up making predictions on that as well. Because if you didn't went forward to separate out your data, you'd make predictions on that as well. Yeah? Qu other questions? Um, two of them. Make a good one. And a, I don't know. Yeah, bad one it gets the point. But yeah, maybe we'll just say this. And a not so backed up by the data available one gets the point across, right? I'm going to predict where I have a lot of data, and I'm going to predict where I don't have a lot of data. Because where I have a lot of data, I'm going to be more confident because I've got other stuff to build that relationship off of. But like for kitty wakes, again, think about those outliers. Like after 15, it's just like a total crapshoot. You've got no idea what's going on out there, right? And you can see that from the graph. You don't have a lot of colonies, and they're all over the place for population. Okay, so make your prediction. Um, show your calculations on that. I'm just going to put calcs <laughs> um, on it, and be sure. Sure to round. Rounding is very, I'll leave a capital D, why not? Round it off. It's very, very, very important. Um, especially in things when you're talking about a prediction that maybe gives you like 16 decimal points. Do you actually know to that much precision? No. No way. So round it down. Generally get rid of decimal points. Round it off if you can. I would say zero DP. And think about it from a realistic point of view. Like if you're predicting for the GDP per Let's see this one. If you're predicting for the like life expectancy of a country, you know, is a life expectancy of 73.2 years. Like, what's that point two mean? That's like a, a month or two, right? So I mean, really, when you're talking about living, are you like, hey, I'm gonna live to 73 in two months? You know, no, you're more like, ah, 73 sounds like a pretty good age. So look at that data set and round appropriately. Like, if you're talking about heights of people, you know. Maybe around, maybe having that one centimeter in there is okay, depending on how accurate your data is to begin with. But in cases like the Kitty Wakes population, or even like we did with time series, some of you guys rounded to like the nearest thousands because you're dealing with data that's worth millions and billions of dollars. Really, do you know it down to one dollar? Nah. So think about that. Sometimes the sometimes in the ones category actually is valuable, and sometimes that's like so far beyond what you should be able to predict, right? If you're predicting into the millions, you're definitely not going to be able to predict between one or two dollars. So round it off, right? So what else can we say about predictions? Tomorrow, Tomorrow afternoon, yep. Yep. So our range is important. Um, oh, I do want to get that context in. Um, Context again. So your prediction here, I will predict for a country with a GDP per capita of, you know, oops, 5,000 US dollars that the life expectancy will be, right? But what's the context that I got in there? Right? Again, go back to what is that point on your line. What are you predicting? You're predicting for a country or a town in New Zealand or a height of a person or whatever the case might be. So be sure that your prediction is for a country, not just for a life expectancy of a donkey. Like, I have got no idea what she's predicting for. You know, it could be anything. So be really specific with that. Um, we do want to get into uh, give a reasonable range of values. So again, that comes from actually look, like looking at the data, and like considering how much um, scatter there is around where you predicted. Okay. So if you're making a prediction where there is lots of points and they're all really close to the line, do you have some confidence in your prediction? Mm -hmm. Yes, you should. Right. So 
expressing that confidence. If there's a lot of um, points, a lot of other countries, keeping it in context, if there's a lot of other countries around that similar, with a similar GDP per capita that have a life expectancy near what I predicted, so I'm reasonably confident in this prediction, but I still think I should have a range of roughly between 70 and 75 years. Mm -hmm. Would you go into the other things that could influence? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then you can get into other things that are going to influence that relationship. Because I do know that, um, you know, there's, yeah, there's other factors that are going on. Chronic disease, you know, obesity Anything epidemics, else? natural disasters, genetics, all sorts of other stuff is going to come into play with life expectancy. I mean, in that case in particular, investigating South Africa was quite easy or interesting. Um, and you can look at that again in the exemplar a little bit. But, like, South Africa has a really, really, really low life expectancy relative to its GDP. Like, the GDP per capita of similar countries, the life expectancy is like 70 years. South Africa, with that same GDP per capita, has 51 year life expectancy. You know, it's 20 years less than countries with similar wealth. Like, why is that? So then if you go in and do some research on South Africa, like, what's the first thing that comes to mind about South Africa's recent history? Yes. Apartheid. Apartheid, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so dealing with racial issues and massive um, wealth gap as well, so that's one thing that you could look at is that for this particular outlier of South, South Africa, there are heaps of wealthy people in South Africa that will live a really long time, but the majority of people in South Africa are what? Poor, Poor impoverished, living in slums, being treated really horribly. They're going to have a low life expectancy. Is that going to bring the average of the whole country down? It is, yeah. right? So that's the situation that you can look at. That would be a contributing factor. Like, you know, do I have an even distribution of wealth within a country to ensure that everybody has about an average of 73 years? Or in the case like South Africa, maybe if you're wealthy, your average is like 70. But if you're not wealthy, your average is like 40, you know? Um, and thinking about how that would apply for an outlier. Um, so yeah, for giving the range, um, look at the scatter and, you know, consider the scatter. Um, Think about how far above and below the line the scatter nearby has been and talk about that to help justify visually, you know, why. So get back to that visuals, like why you're giving that range that you've decided to give. Um, what else can you do in there? You can go on to do that research in there. And that would be um, other factors that would influence the relationship, such as, for instance, the wealth distribution within a country. Um, and here, this is also where you'd probably go on to talk about, um, you know, so go on to split out the data if it is interesting to do so. And again, just to emphasize that one, just because you give me a graph with two different colors on it and two different trend lines doesn't mean you get excellence. You've got to make sure that you're talking about it really well and interpreting it and understanding what the difference is, like why is this important or what's going on. So keep that in mind. Like if you're just in survival mode and you just want to get through this, like just doing lots of extra stuff isn't going to make your report any better. Like really knuckle down and focus on doing things well and understanding it. Um, so if it's interesting, split out the data and go on to talk about that. You can remake a prediction um, for the specific groupings you broke out into, right? So you could predict for male or you could predict for female or developing or non-developing countries. <coughs> and again, um, talk about concerns in the data here. So this is, um, again, things that we can talk about are like small sample size. You know, is it representative? Would there be concerns related to the prediction? Mm-hmm. Like, again, going back to that confidence, like I predicted 73. My range, I think, is going to be between 70 and 75. But, you know, there are other things that can go on. So I. You know, if I was going to predict for, I don't know, um, the United States, for instance, there's a huge income gap there as well. Maybe things would be different, similar to South Africa, depending on which group I was, which person I was actually predicting for. It would kind of break out to the people who are wealthy and the people that are don't. 
you know, so you can go on to talk about that kind of stuff as well. Um, what are other concerns? Um, gaps in data or not much um, other points to compare to at extreme values. Right, that goes back to the kitty wakes. I'm gonna predict for a colony size of you know 5,000, but I have no other colonies above 2,000, so this is kind of a ridiculous prediction, and really, who knows what could happen? You know, maybe kitty wakes can't even fly 5,000 kilometers squared, so there would never ever be a colony that big. You know, think about think about that kind of stuff. How else would it apply? Um, yeah. Rub subsets, um, right, that was a question that you brought up, Phoebe, about um, whether if you split your data out into different subsets, whether you could have a nonlinear and a linear relationship. You can even do that with your whole data. So maybe instead of splitting out the subsets because it's not that interesting, they're still exactly the same, um, you might think about, okay, well, part of my graph actually fits a nonlinear trend really well and the other path fits a linear really well. So maybe I would talk about if I'm making a prediction below. So for instance, if your graph looked like this and then like this, maybe you would want to use a log graph for values below 50 and use a linear one for values above 50. Again, so when I first did this, if I first do the investigation, I'll probably just pick linear because it sort of fits everything okay. And I talk about that and say, hey, you know, I'm a little bit concerned because the data is a little bit higher. You know, all the data here is above the trend line, my linear trend line there um, for the lower data set. Uh, but this is what I'm gonna use. I'll predict for this and this, blah, blah, blah. Then come back and say, you know, but seeing that I had two distinct trends in that data, it started off really nonlinear, but it finishes really linear. I've broken it out and decided to fit a different trend line. And same idea for subsetting that data, you do it the same way. You would just have to go in and add your own column and say, you know, like an L for less than 50 and an O for over 50, and then subset out your Excel sheet. And then you could get those two graphs on there, put on your different curves, and say, if I'm going to make a prediction below 50, I would like to use this line because it fits that data better. If I'm making a prediction above, I'd use this one. But don't overdo this. Don't come back with like 15 models for every three seconds of your data, right? You don't want to overfit stuff. You're still looking for the big picture here, okay? So that can be something to talk about. Um, and the other one is obviously getting into outliers. So go back to that idea of watching those videos on outliers and what they do for data, like how they would affect stuff, how they would change things. Um, so. and their impact on the um, predictions. So again, this idea of a leveraged outlier, if it's really far outside the range, so it's a really big X value, for instance, it's gonna change the way the trend line fits like this. So it's gonna change the angle of it, change the gradient, it'll pivot it up or down. That's what we call it a leverage. It'll pull it up, or pull it down, but leave this end of the same. Or if you have a outlier that's in the Y direction, so your trend line is like this, and you've got an outlier really high, it's gonna shift the graph slightly up. Okay, so it's not changing the angle too much, but it is gonna shift it up or down slightly. So again, we talked about that with the outliers, but that can be stuff to go into. So um, being smart about it, it's not just, oh, I'm gonna take this outlier out, but you know, if it is an interesting outlier, talk about it. Like, for instance, that South Africa one is a great example. Like, South Africa is a really interesting outlier, and there's reasons for it. Do some research, you find out that there is reasons why it's got such a low life expectancy for such a high GDP. Would you research and then like take the outlier out and then do it again? Um, I would do the research and I would talk about it as an outlier, but again for South Africa, you leave it in for your predictions, but you talk about how it's impacting that graph. So when I look at South Africa, it's actually, um, do I have that open? So South Africa, we see it there. Again, what I'm saying is that there's other countries with similar GDP. So look above, you see they're way up there at 70. South Africa is like down with the lowest of the low. You know, it's almost the lowest life expectancy given. That's weird, right? And then you go and look and say, oh, why is South Africa's life expectancy? You put it into Google, you come up with all this other information. You can talk about that. But you need to justify this idea that, but this is still a relevant point. You know, this is still 
part of the real world and it represents parts of other countries that maybe aren't represented here. There's going to be heaps of countries where there's like the few super rich elite and everybody else is starving to death. You know, so this is is valid in that point because it's helping to represent that that portion of countries that have those circumstances. So you wouldn't take it out, but you could talk about how it's changed things. And if you look at the gradients, not the gradients, but if you look at the equations of these two trend lines, has it changed much? Not really. I mean, 4.6 and 4.5, 31 and 32, you know, it hasn't changed it too much. But what it has done is that it would pull the line with South Africa, it'll pull it down just slightly here because it's what we call an outlier in the y direction. It's sitting further below, so it's going to pull the graph down just a smidge, right? Right in here. I'll just curve it down just a tiny smidge as compared to without it. But you can see, again, and that's another reason to back it up, like it isn't making that big of a difference to me. Yeah? Um, what if you could justify that the point was like a... A total mistake? Yes. If you could justify it as a total mistake or a calculation error or somebody just typed it in wrong, then by all means you can get rid of it and say my model is best without this because it's complete rubbish. But it's pretty unlikely that we would, I'm not saying we can't, but I'm saying that would be pretty weird. But you can definitely talk about the extremes, about how different it is. 